Hi, I'm Dr. J, and this is a video about p-values and confidence intervals. If you have not uh, heard about p-values and confidence intervals before, this is probably not the video for you, but I guess I'm wondering why you're here. Uh, feel free to comment down below. Uh, but you might want to get some background on p-values and confidence intervals via the playlist uh, that talks all about statistical inference. Uh, in this particular video, I want to talk about a particular correspondence between p-values and confidence intervals and how the two interrelate. As usual, down below, there's a PDF version of these slides. As a quick reminder uh, of what p-values are, here is the American Statistical Association statement informally on what p-values are. So p-value is the probability of a, under a specified statistical model that a statistical summary of the data would be equal to or more extreme than its observed value. This is very similar to the definition I've been giving in a couple of my videos. Uh, basically, we have a statistic, that's the statistical summary. We have this as a more extreme region. We have the observed value, that's the statistic from the actual data. And then we have this specified statistical model. Usually, that's the model associated with the null hypothesis. So we construct this p-value, and it gives us an indication of how incompatible the data are with the model. In contrast, we have confidence intervals. And a 100, 1 minus a percent confidence interval uh, contains the true value of the parameter in that percentage of the intervals constructed using the procedure. Here, 1 minus a is called the confidence level, a is oftentimes called the significance level, and relates to uh, making decisions with p-values. So there's nothing very obvious about why these two should be related at all. Okay, But they are actually related, and they're related because both of them rely on the sampling distribution of the data, and in particular of the statistic, uh, the p-value, a test statistic, and the confidence interval, the endpoints, uh, but usually those are related. And so the correspondence that I want to mention in this video is this, that if you have this null hypothesis where you have a, the parameter of interest is equal to a particular value here, theta naught, then uh, there are two situations that could occur. Perhaps the p-value is less than a particular threshold a called the significance level. And if that p-value is less than a, then a confidence interval constructed using a confidence level 1 minus that value of a will not contain that value theta naught. The opposite has the opposite result. So if the p-value is larger than a, then that same confidence interval will contain the true value theta naught. So this is the correspondence that I want to talk about. So let's get some examples and maybe it will uh, become more concrete. So let's go with the normal model with the t-test. Uh, here we're going to test the mean is equal to 1.5. We can do that in R using the t.test function. Here in R uh, we've decided that we're going to use a significance level of, what is it? It's uh, 0 0.05, our standard significance level. And we see this p-value, the p-value is about 0 0.03, so the p-value is less than that significance level A. And now if we look at the confidence interval output here, we get the values about 2.26 and 4.37. And that interval does not contain the hypothesized value 1.5. Maybe it's more this way? Anyway, that hypothesized value 1.5 does not contain it. And we knew that because the p-value is less than the significance level. In contrast, now I'm just going to change the significance level. I'm going to change it down to something relatively small. It's going to be 0 0.001. That same p-value of point... Oh, sorry, I didn't realize the p-value is 0 0.003, not just 0 0.03. So that p-value of 0 0.003 is no longer less than that significance level. And so the uh, confidence level, notice here in the code that I have that 1 minus a is the confidence level. So the confidence interval that's constructed, which is about 1.08 to what is it, 5.55, right? That now does contain the null hypothesis value of 1.5, right? So that gives you those two ideas. If the p-value is less than the threshold, the interval will not contain that hypothesized value. If the p-value is not lower than the threshold, then the confidence interval will. And now it's vitally important that that significance level and the confidence level are one minus each other for that to work out. You can't just take any confidence rule. You have to take the particular one associated with the confidence level that's 1 minus the significance level. All right, so now, why is this true? And so one way to think about it is to think about uh, trying a whole bunch of different null hypotheses. So doing a whole bunch of different hypothesis tests for different values 
of, in the t-test case, this mu, that population mean parameter. Right? It turns out that the mu's that fail to reject the null hypothesis are precisely those that are in that confidence interval. All right, so let's just show a demonstration of this. Uh, here, we're going to start with a, a significance level of 0.1, so our confidence level is 0.9. We're going to construct a 90% confidence interval, so we get 2.46 and 4.17. Now we're going to run all of those different hypotheses tests. So that's this picture right here. On the x-axis, on the bottom, we have the different values for mu naught. On the y-axis, we have the associated p-value with that particular test. Right? So we can see that those p-values uh, go from 0 to 1, and they're close to 0 for values very far uh, away from this middle, right? which turns out to be the sample mean. Uh, but those p-values are large right? in this region that's sort of orangish. If we now draw a line at the significance level, there's that line at the significance level, and that line, right, you can see, differentiates those, uh, well, you can see how I've color-coded the p-values, those that are above the line, right, that are not significant, uh, are color-coded in this sort of orangish color, and those that are below the line, those that are significant, are given that sort of bluish color. And now if we take those uh, values from mu naught, that have a p-value that's larger than that significance level, and we draw vertical bars at the endpoints of that range of values, it turns out that that is exactly the confidence interval that we were looking for. That is this 2.46 to 4.17. So uh, sometimes you might hear statisticians talking about p-values as inverting hypothesis tests. Sorry. They'll talk about confidence intervals as being inverting hypothesis tests, and that's what they're talking about, right? So one way to think about constructing that confidence interval is just to invert the hypothesis test. That means do it a bunch of times, find out where it's not significant, that's your confidence interval. All right, who cares, right? Is this just a statistical curiosity, or is there something more going on here? And Definitely, I wouldn't have done it if it just did, well, that's not true. I might have done it if it was a statistical curiosity, but that's not really my main point in this video. I think this is an important point when it comes to communicating scientific and statistical results. So commonly in papers that I see in scientific literature, I'll see something like this. The population mean was significantly different than 1.5, p equals 0 0.004. For me personally, as I read this, it's almost completely lacking in any information. There's a lot of characters written up there and it basically doesn't tell me virtually anything. Right? It tells me that you did a hypothesis test, presumably you had a null hypothesis that the population mean was 1.5 and you got a small p-value. Okay? In some sense, whoopity doo -dah. All right. What is a much more informative sentence is this one. A 90% confidence interval for the population mean was 2.46 to 4.17. You can see that the lengths of those two statements are almost identical. And in fact, the second one's a little bit shorter. Right? So if we're thinking about compactly communicating statistical results, uh, I think the second sentence is much more informative. For one, it tells me, because of this correspondence between p-values and confidence intervals, it tells me right away that the p-value is less than 0.1 for any value of the null hypothesis outside that interval. I know got 0.1 because I have a 90% interval, confidence level is, is 0.9, significance level therefore is 0.1. Okay, that's the first thing it tells me, which is, you know, the, sec the first statement up there told me that, uh, told me maybe a little bit more that I might want to know for a particular value 1.5. But this second sentence then goes up much farther, right? If I read the first sentence, I'm immediately thinking, okay, great, it's not 1.5, but what is it? Right? And the second sentence tells me that. The second sentence says, here is a set of reasonable values for that population mean. Right? The reasonable values are, say, 2.46 to 4.17. In addition to telling me a set of reasonable values, it also portrays the amount of uncertainty we have uh, because of that interval width and the confidence level. Those two together tell me, give me some idea of what kind of uncertainty we have. Now, the last thing I'll say is this is a confidence interval. I really hope that it's an approximate credible interval because that would tell us what we can believe about this population mean. 
That is, if it's an approximate credible interval, then we can believe with 90% probability that it's between 2.46 and 4.17. All right, so uh, I hope uh, maybe some scientists out there that are uh, watching this video will think twice about how they communicate their statistical results and will think about incorporating confidence intervals rather than p-values in the way that they write their papers. Uh, I'm not alone in this. There are many statisticians who would suggest that we demonstrate or present results using confidence intervals, intervals over p-values. In the next video, I'm going to talk about why p-values don't mean what you think they mean. Hope to catch you there.